to you and to me. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Aren't you glad that that's what this church is for? It's to equip you. Y'all can be seated. To equip you to do the work of the Lord. Amen? When you leave these four walls, the work begins many times. It's just, just beginning. You know, in here you get equipped and out there you do it. Amen? So um, how many know what this is right here? How many know what this is? How many stand in front of these every day? Just about. I hope so. <laughs> Did you look into one this morning? Yeah, and, and some of y'all are like, you know, as I've gotten into my 40s, and y'all are going to, some of y'all that are a lot older than that are just going to be like, oh, come on now. As I've gotten into my 40s, I've noticed things that I didn't notice before in the mirror, and I've noticed some stuff that left me behind and is somewhere that I can't find it, like my hair and, you know, stuff like that. But every morning, we get up. And the first thing a lot of us do is we look in the mirror. And um, a mirror can only do one thing. It can reflect what's there. You know, the only, about the only place that that's not true is in a carnival fun house where uh, you get in front of it and it makes you look really skinny or really fat, you know, or uh, whatever. But uh, most of the time a mirror just reflects honestly what's before it. And as we pursue a life that's filled with Jesus, we need to be just like that mirror. We need to reflect Jesus to a hurting and dying world. We need to be so full of Jesus that when people see us, that his reflection is coming off of us. And we're shining for him. And uh, today I want to talk to you today about being faithful. And if we're to truly live lives with the love of Jesus then we got to exhibit this quality of faithfulness. Did you know that faithfulness is one of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5? Yeah, it's one of, the, one of the qualities of the fruit of the Spirit. So what is faithfulness? Let's look at the definition of faithful. Having or showing true and constant support or loyalty. Deserving trust. Keeping your promises or doing what you're supposed to do. Another definition is not having sex with someone who is not your wife or husband. Um, then another one is full of what? Faith. Faithful. Steadfast in affection or allegiance is another one. Firm in adherence to the promises or in observance of duty. Given with strong assurance. True to the facts. To a standard or to an original. So this morning, I want to encourage you of ways that we can be true to the original. The one that we're made in the image of. Jesus. Amen? We're made in His image. And we're created to look just like Him. We're supposed to. <laughs> That's what we're believing for. And so we're going to get into this journey this morning and talk more about faithfulness. First, let's talk about how God is faithful. What are we reflecting? What are we supposed to reflect? First, you have the faithful promises of God. We're going to zoom through a couple of scriptures here, so I'm going to go kind of quick. And you can either read them on the screen, or if you can flip fast, um, you can flip fast. But I'm going to read fast here, because we're going to go through quite a few of them. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? That's the faithful promises of God. Then we have the faithful presence of God. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. These are the last words before Jesus ascended into heaven. He said, all authority has been given to me in, an, in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. And lo, what does he say? I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You never have to wonder if God is with you. You never have to wonder if his presence is there. The Bible says he is omnipresent. 
He is there for all who call upon him. He is immediately there. Amen. So he's, his presence is faithful. The faithful power of God. So we have the promises, the presence, and the power of God. Notice that there's peas involved in this this morning. <laughs> Psalm 89, verse 8. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord? Your faithfulness also surrounds you. So in, in being mighty, he is also faithful. Amen. Amen. They're intertwined. The faithful plans of God. Proverbs 19, 21 says, There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. His plans are faithful. Faithful peace of God. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Prince of what? Prince of Peace. Then Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. This verse seems to end up in just about every message I preach. Somehow, <laughs> I just noticed that a lot. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay, so, so we had... We had the faithful promise of, promises of God, the faithful presence of God, the faithful power of God, the faithful plans of God, the faithful peace of God. That's our God that we serve. He's a faithful God. That's what we're supposed to reflect. Amen. And we reflect it by, by we reflect his, his character by spending time with him. You become who you hang around. <laughs> Amen. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed that the people you spend a lot of time with, you start even talking alike? Sometimes uh, married couples who have been married a long time, it, it's a phenomena, but they even start to look alike to a degree. <laughs> have you ever noticed that? It's just it's crazy how that works. It's just, you, you rub off so much on each other. It's amazing. Praise God. Well, that's the way we should be with the Lord. Amen. We're the bride of Christ. Yes, we are. All right. So when I think of the word faithfulness, let, we, we took a, a glimpse at God's faithfulness. And so when I think of the word faithfulness, two words come to mind. OK, honesty and consistency, honesty and consistency. So how can we be honest and consistent, trustworthy models of Jesus? How can we reflect him. How can we do that? We got to do this. We got to number one, be faithful at home. And that's, there's, there's some division. There's some uh, parts under this faithful to our spouses, husbands or wives, whatever applies to you. <laughs> Proverbs five, it says, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. God gave us our spouses. We're to walk through life with our wives or wives with your husbands as partners. If you're not married yet, this is what you can believe God for. You can believe God for a partner that, that you, can, you can just join yourself to them and, and, and in, a, in a, just a, a, a God-magnificent way, a, a miraculous way, be united together such a way that you look like each other, you act like you go as one unit and you do things for God. Amen. Partners. Malachi 2 verse 13 says, Another thing you do, you flood the Lord's altar with tears. You weep and wail because He no longer looks with favor on your offerings or accepts them with pleasure from your hands. You ask why? It's because the Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her. Though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant, has not the God has not the one God made you? You belong to Him in body and in spirit. And what does the one God seek? Godly offspring. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. Be faithful to each other. 
We're partners together. We're joined together as husbands and wives in covenant on this journey called life. We need to serve each other, serve our spouses, chair out, serve each other. I, I dare you to challenge each other with the amount you serve them. Like in other words, you try to out serve each other, outdo each other in the area of service. Cherish your spouse. Consider the feelings and needs of your spouse. I've noticed as, as I've been married, I, I can't believe I've been married almost 22 years. Um, and I've noticed as we've been married longer, I can almost sense when, when Sarah's going through stuff. How many can, can relate to that? And when you do, don't hesitate to say, hey, is everything okay? You know, that's part of cherishing and loving and being faithful to your spouse. They need you. They need you to be there for them. They need you to take time and say, is everything all right? Can we talk? Are you okay? Can I pray for you? You know, because who knows? You, you come home as a, as, as a guy and, and something's happened during the day that you don't even know about. You know, and um, there are probably some in this room who've been through uh, difficult marital issues. Maybe you're going through some right now. Or you're, or you're dealing with the scars of the past. And I want to encourage you this morning. And what I want to challenge you to do is plead the blood of Jesus over the past. And move forward. And cherish the present. Cherish what's in front of you. And if your spouse is in front of you in that present, cherish them. Love on them. Move behind. Let the past just fall behind you and move forward and say, God, give me the grace to be a partner with the one you have enjoined me to. In Jesus' name, help me to love them. And loving your spouse and being faithful and trustworthy to them as your partner for life, your covenant partner. Ephesians 5, verses 21 to 33. I'm going to read these. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this way, in the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Amen to that. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So take the part that applies to you. If you're a wife, take the wife's part. If you're a husband, take the husband's part. Focus on that. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Don't focus on what the other one's supposed to do. <laughs> Amen? Dad has told us that before. A lot of times we get, we get it reversed and we keep focusing on what the other one's supposed to do. No, focus on what you're supposed to do. Amen? Another part of this is let your kids, or this can apply for grandparents, it can apply to grandkids. Let your kids or your grandkids see you love each other. See you love on each other. There's great security found by a kid who openly sees regular evidence that daddy loves mommy and mommy loves daddy. Kiss each other, hug each other in front of them. In front of them. And, and tell them, tell, tell your wife, your husband, I love you. I love you so much. And make sure they're hearing you. Be, don't, be purposeful with this. Maintain a date night. And you're never too old to date. Ever. If you, you <laughs> maintain a date night because time runs away, man. It does. We go to work, we come home, we do stuff during the day, and we come home and we're tired and we're done. How many can relate to that? 
You got to be intentional. You almost got to plan it ahead of time. You got to say, okay, Friday night we're doing such and such. And we're going to go here and we're going to do this and, and, and put it on the calendar. Or, or if, if, if uh, budget is a big deal, have a clean movie and popcorn at the house. I mean, Netflix is a good thing sometimes. We, or, or, you know, uh, there's a thing called Pure Flix that has really good Christian films. Uh, they're, they're making some awesome Christian films out there now. And we're members of that as well. Um, okay, husbands, one more bit of advice. Much love can be shown to your wife simply by helping around the house. This convicted me. <laughs> do dishes. I do that. I do that. Help with grocery shopping, you know? Ask your wife, hey, can I, can I pick up something if you're coming home? You know, is there anything I need to get? Just simple things like that. Any errands that need to be run that you didn't get a chance to run today? Um, clean, clean the house. Help, help with the kids, cook. Or, or ordering a pizza if you don't want to burn the house down, you know? <laughs> All right. Martin Luther said this. He said, there's no more lovely, friendly, or charming relationship, communion, or company than a good marriage. Martin Luther said also, let the wife make the husband glad to come home and let him make her sorry to see him leave. <laughs> Be faithful to each other and in turn reflect as a couple the light of God's love to your kids, your friends, and the world. Okay, next, to our kids, we need to be faithful. And also our grandkids. Luke chapter 18, Jesus loves children. He said in, in uh, chapter 18, verse 15, they, then they also brought infants to him that he might touch them, just like we did today. That's an illustration of that. And, but when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Ephesians 6, children obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. I've learned a lot about being faithful while raising my kids. Um, how many can relate to that? It's like a training ground, folks, in a major way. And just about the time you think that you got it all down, something, it's like a curveball hits you, you know? <laughs> and you're like, what happened? <laughs> I thought I was doing okay until just now. <laughs> and, uh, and faithfulness Here's, here's some definitions of faithfulness to kids. Faithfulness to keep your promises to them. Faithfulness to spend time with them, to play with them, to laugh with them. Another, one thing you can do is eat together regularly as a family. Maintain a no TV on during dinner time policy and no phones at the table policy. This allows for conversations during dinner. How many have ever seen people at restaurants and they're going on a date and the, the, they got, both of them got their phones out. None, neither one's talking to the other one, and they're like this. No, man, put the phones away. Talk to one another. Faithfulness to discipline and teach your children or, or your grandchildren. If God's put your grandchildren in your lives and, and you've become like second parents to them in a way, then, you know, teach them, discipline them, coach them. You're your kids' greatest coaches and mentors that they have. Much of what they learn is caught rather than taught. Our kids learn more seeing what we do than from what we say. Faithfulness to pray with them on a regular basis. Read the word with them. Family devotions that are on their level. There are tons of like page a day family devotionals at the Christian bookstore that you can just pick up. We're doing one right now called um, uh, the Big Book of Animal Devotions and it's totally on the level of both Josh and my daughter who loves animals and she just about knows exactly what I'm going to read before I read it about that animal because she studied so much of them she's like a walking encyclopedia of animals and so um, but but these devotionals are just so practical 
and we just read one every night. Uh, tomorrow or tonight, we're going to be talking about the sloth, if that will give you, <laughs> and about laziness. So yeah, just you know, uh, devotions together, praying together, teaching your kids by action. You know, giving them a chance to pray a couple of sentences every night and starting to learn how to pray to God and how to get it out. Second thing, be faithful at work to your boss and to your coworkers. There was a boss one time, one of his employees, he called him into the office and he said, uh, hey, do you believe in life after death? She said, uh, or he said, yes, sir. Well, that's good, because after you left early yesterday to, to go to your grandmother's funeral, she stopped in to see you. Whoa. <laughs> you know, that kind of goes along with the Bible scripture that says, be sure your sin will find you out, right? <laughs> be truthful and be faithful at work. Amen? Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6 talks about employees. They use the word bond servants in, these, in the letter, but, but this can apply today to employees and employers. Bond servants, be, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh. This is Ephesians 6, 5. With fear and trembling and sincerity of heart, and I mean, as to Christ, obey your boss as, your, as you would obey the Lord. You know, with that kind of honor and respect. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Jesus, bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord. You're doing it for Jesus and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. And you masters, do the same things to them. If you're an employer, this applies to you. Giving up threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven and there's no partiality with him. In other words, God's looking at us. He's watching what we're doing. And we need to watch it too. All right, Colossians 3, 22. Bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive re the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. You know, that's powerful. There's a reward for being a good employee that comes from God. It's not just, you're not just doing it for a raise. You're not just doing it to, to get a, a, a promotion. You're, you're going to get a reward from the Lord for doing your job well. Powerful stuff. Because you're serving Jesus on the job. It says here, you serve the Lord Christ, but he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done and there's no partiality. Same, same thing as what was said in Ephesians. Several points here I want to bring out. Number one, be on time. Everybody turn to the person next to you and say it again. I will be on time. <laughs> faithful workers, faithful workers who are always doing their job without being constantly monitored and who are on time and even early and who are diligent and willing to receive correction and criticism, they are the ones who will be exalted with raises and positions. Don't bicker or complain to others at work or on social media, oh my goodness, about your boss or your fellow employees. You say, man, I didn't come to church for this this morning. <laughs> I didn't come for this. Well, maybe so. Instead, pray. A lot more good will come forth from your prayers for your bosses and for your fellow employees than from your complaints on Facebook or Twitter or to each other. Your boss and your fellow workers need your prayers. You don't know what bosses deal with on a daily basis. You don't see half of what they go through. It's, it's, it's made like that. And, and you should be faithful. Faithfulness is exhibited in actions of caring consideration for other people. Be faithful and reflect Jesus on the job. Amen. 
Do your job with infectious joy and do it with excellence. The last thing, be faithful at church. In your attendance. Hebrews 10, verse 23 through 25, it says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. How many know the day is approaching? We've been watching, we've been watching uh, End Times um, teaching from Hal Lindsey. We watched uh, several videos recently and other good teachers in our discipleship class. And I mean, the signs are everywhere that the day of the Lord is approaching. Amen. We're going to be out of here soon, y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but it says exhort one another, you know, because times can be tough as that day approaches. Things can start getting heated in the world. Perilous times, the Bible calls it. Psalm 84. Verses 1 through 4. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. So be faithful in church. Being faithful in church brings strength to your walk. When you attend church faithfully, it brings strength to your walk and keeps you built up in your faith. It keeps you encouraged because you say, okay, I am not alone in this. I don't care what the devil's trying to tell me. I am not alone in this. Others have been through this and they're praying for me. So I'm going to get through this too. Amen. The other part of this is be open. In your, to your church body. And, and, and when the, the altar ministry time is here, come on up and get prayer if you need it. Don't suffer in silence. Amen? That's what church is for. Church is designed to be a sigh of, the, a sigh of relief in the middle of a ter- tornado of crazy circumstances. You come in here and you go, ah, you know, I can breathe again. I'm going to make it. I've got God's word on my side. I've got his spirit in me. I'm built up in my walk. Verses 10 through 12 in that same chapter says, A day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Great blessings come to those who help out in church, who help out in various ways at church, and then they maintain faithfulness in their commitments, which brings us to our last point today. Faithfulness in your volunteer ministry commitments. Oh, it's quiet in here. (laughs) Okay, number one, I'm going to say it again. I said it for employer-employee stuff. Be on time. Be on time even early for your ministry commitment. Nothing makes a leader of an area of ministry in a church sweat more than a volunteer who runs late or doesn't even remember to show up and doesn't call, doesn't let you know, just doesn't show up. If for some reason you're running late, send a text or call the leader. Make it a habit to put your volunteer commitments at church as a priority on your calendar. If it takes it, put it on your, your, your calendar and write it down, whatever it takes. Realize this. You are valuable. If you're, if you're doing something in God's kingdom in this church and you're volunteering, you know, your, your position that you are filling is so valuable. I don't care what you're doing. If, 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 you're, doing, um, if you're doing what Shirley does so faithfully, I, God bless her, doing the bulletin. You know, if you're doing the sound, if you're doing greeting, if you're ushering uh, children's church workers, God bless you. As as the father of Joshua Battle, I say, God bless you. (laughs) 
especially those that are in that room, <laughs> realize just how valuable you are to me, especially. I'm a parent, not just a pastor. Amen? <laughs> Amen. If you're running the media, whatever. No matter what you do, you're valuable. We're the body. And when a part of that body is missing, how many know if your arm was cut off, you would miss it terribly, wouldn't you? That's right. Serve with joy is my last point. With joy and contagious enthusiasm and excitement. We read in verse 23 of Colossians, whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. That means with energy, with gusto, put your heart in it. You know, if it takes it, and you, you just pray right before you're about to do it and say, Lord, just help me to be the best children's church worker I can be today. Help me to be the best sound person I can be, the best singer I can be. Whatever it is, I want to be the best. I want to be faithful. Knowing that from the Lord you'll receive the reward of your inheritance. You serve, for you serve the Lord Christ. You're serving Jesus when you serve in, in volunteer ministry in any way in church. Amen. I want to read this in closing. This is called, Whose Job Is It? You may have heard this before. This is a story about four people. Their names were everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. There was an important job to be done, and everybody was asked to do it. Everybody was sure somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. <laughs> so, praise the Lord. I, I just... I thank God for each and every position of volunteer ministry in this church. Be faithful to attend church and then joyfully serve in volunteer ministries here. If you haven't yet found a place to help out, and you can see us as pastors, and we can help you find a place to get plugged in somewhere. Um, one final thought. There's one more thing that the Lord brought to my heart this morning. One of, the, one of the definitions of faithful that we gave at the beginning was true to the facts to a standard or to an original. Be faithful to the creator and to the purpose for which you were created. How do you do this? Nobody in here is an accident. There's not a person in here who was an accident. You were made on purpose. You were born with a purpose given to you by your creator. Amen. And the question is, are you fulfilling that purpose? So often people go through their days just doing stuff and not really sure why they're doing it. Get to know your Father in heaven. Spend time with Him. Spend time daily and get filled up with His direction and, your, and His love for you. Let Him love on you. And then even the most mundane, ordinary things take on new meaning because everything you do takes on new meaning. It takes on a purpose. You realize who you're doing it for. You begin to live life differently. You begin to realize you can make a difference. And you can shine the light of his love everywhere you go. No matter what you're doing. Amen. But this all starts by knowing Jesus for yourself. It all starts by having him in your heart. And I want us to, to close our eyes this morning and bow our heads in prayer as we close this morning. And... Um, Each and every person in this room, if you're in this room and you say, you know what, um, I need to know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I don't have him in my life. Or maybe you're saying, to yourself, maybe you're saying uh, before the Lord as you're looking into your heart, you're saying, you know, um, I've fallen away from God. I, I, um, I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. I'm, I need to come home to him this morning, just like the prodigal son came home in the parable in Luke 15. I, I'm running home to my father this morning. I want to renew my commitment of faithfulness to him. If that's you. Um, and so if either two of those things apply, I want you to lift your hand this morning. And with every head bowed, every eye closed, and just ask yourself, is that you? And if it is, lift your hand. 
And um, if you're watching by internet this morning, I want to give you the opportunity to do the same thing. Just lift your hand before the Lord as a sign that, hey, um, I need this prayer. And he sees your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's, uh, let's all stand to our feet. Another thing I want us to include in this prayer, because I think I don't really think it's necessary to ask us to raise our hands for this, because I think it all, there's something that applies to all of us in this deal. Um, I want to pray that we'll be faithful in whatever we do, mainly faithful to the Lord, you know, uh, in everything that we do, true to Him, and that we'll reflect Him and His love to everybody we turn in contact with. Amen. At home, at work, in our church, everywhere, in society. Let's pray this together. Say, Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner, with my whole heart. I repent of my sins, and I turn to you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life. To you. to you. I accept you now, accept you now. And, forever and forever as my personal Lord and Savior. Lord and Savior. Help me to be faithful to you and everything I do. And fill me with your love, with your love. The, light the light of your love. Help me to love others, Help me to love others. with the same love you've shown to me. Thank you for forgiving me, for saving me, and giving me a new life. In your name, the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Thank you, Jesus. If you said that prayer and you're watching by internet, um, tell somebody by, by hitting the... Uh, prayer request and praise report button, send us a note. Let us know that you sent, you prayed that prayer with us this morning. Um, and um, we're happy, that we're going to be happy to hear that. Amen. And we know people are watching because we get um, uh, requests and we, we connect with you on Facebook and other mediums of social media, other avenues of social media. And uh, we also want to make you aware that there are uh, some free books that are available to you. Um, on You can get them by, by going and hitting the uh, free books button on the, uh, on the website at glorychurch.com and um, we'll send you them electronically for download. We'll send you a, a, a link to download them and um, they, I hope they're a blessing to you. There'll be seven free books. And then we also want to, dad, dad, my dad who's the senior pastor here, he he uh, made you aware of the newest book, um, which is uh, done out from an outside publisher. It's called There Is Hope, and it is not free, but it's very well priced. And um, you can pick it up at thereishopebook.com. You can also find it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Amen. We want we want you to get these books in your hands. And there's also copies, paper copies, for those that are in here of those. Uh, free books um, on the back table. Take them and give them out. I gave one the other day as I was picking up groceries to somebody. You, you can just, you can give them uh, out easily. People usually never turn away a free book. I, I've, I've rarely, I don't, I, I've rarely had anybody turn me down if I can remember. And I thank God for these tools that we have. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's, uh, let's bow our hearts and Wait on the Holy Spirit before we close. Thank you, Lord, you're faithful. Thank you for filling us with your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If anyone has a word from the Lord or that something you feel like the Holy Spirit is impressing upon your heart, uh, just... Uh, Feel free to speak it out. Amen. Or you can come on up here if you need to to use the mic. Thank you, Jesus.
thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My Jesus, I love thee. I know. you we love you now <laughs> help us to love you more thank you, Lord. amen we want to know you more we want to be faithful to you Lord we thank you for making us faithful witnesses of who you are thank you Lord thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I just you keep hearing the word grace and Somebody needs grace in this place this morning. And um, if you are in this place and you say, you know, I, I haven't been faithful and, and, and I don't know that, 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 you know, God will, he may be mad at me. No, God, God is full of grace. And if you come to him repentant and you say, Lord, help me to be faithful, he will help you. He's faithful. The Bible says we can come boldly before the throne room of grace and find mercy and grace to help in time of need. So if you're in need of grace this morning, go before the throne and uh, let him fill you with his faithfulness, his ability. He gives us not only the instruction to be faithful, he gives us the ability to be faithful. Thank you, Lord, by his spirit. Thank you, Lord. I just pray for a renewal and a, and a blessing of, of his grace and his faithfulness over us. Thank you, Jesus. Wait one more minute. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. 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 Um, did anybody get anything out of this this yes, morning? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I encourage you to come back. We, we don't just have one service on Sundays. We have a second service on Sunday nights at 6. And um, come and pray with us. It's a prayer service. And it's, it's, our, widely, it's our most widely uh, viewed service online. And we have prayer requests that come in from all over. I, I get comments all the time from those locally that I see, people that I run into that say, we're watching your prayer service. and Because, and you know, they go to their church on Sunday morning and then people that are, that they, they go to our church on Sunday night via the prayer service, you know, watching it online. And so uh, you can join us right here in the sanctuary and pray with us. And um, it's a powerful hour. It's just really good. So I encourage you to come back at six. Also seven o'clock Wednesday night. Um, and uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.